Apple of life. Thank you very much. I had to go over, over every flower again. Because when you're staring at the big field, it's not too impossible to see the two that are stopped. In fact, there were two in the corner right there, the one that just passed. Ugh, just, let's just get out of here. I, wow, I just hurt. <laughs> okay, now we're to the quote unquote dungeon of heaven. And, yep, look who's back. To the bees. Why are there so many bees? Actually, I haven't even started on the bees yet. We'll see why in just a second. Okay. You see, every time you run into one of these things, you got to hit it, your sword to open it. Progress. Each one of them has a bee in it. Then you get to this thing, which has a lot of bees in it. So many bees! Why are there so many bees? You at least can't get some money out of this. Okay. You think it would be easier to hit so many bees? Okay, that should be enough. Okay, yeah, we're good. I don't even know what these things in the air are. They look like weird sky frogs or something. Okay, it's hard to tell, but there's an explanation point at the beginning of that walkway. It kind of hints to you that it's going to start falling apart. This area is kind of strange, too, in that um, you see it breaks the tiles as you go, but it doesn't actually fall through. If you jump on them, however, everything you've walked on falls off. Fortunately, it's never, it never doesn't really come into play at any point. Okay, we got this thing. A big old slime. Uh, yeah, as the wall so helpfully says, you want to jump. There's a little walkway back here in case you screwed it up like I just did. And jump. Jump too soon. And again, apparently I'm an idiot or something, and jump, okay. Now we've got this little net thing that looks like somebody's very surprised face. I think of Doug for some reason. Okay, I think there's a switch or something over here. No? No, no switch. Okay, uh... Not sure what the deal with the fleece here is, but, uh, ah, yeah, another warning. Stand clear, and more bees! Okay. That is the way to progress a little bit later, but we also need another part of that path. To activate it, I believe we need to be on the other side of this board. First, no, there's nothing here. Except bees. Oh, hey, bees. Okay. You'll see that little walkway there breaks, too. It doesn't really have much of a point. It just slides you inward. Okay, magical floating sky tiles. Standard adventure stuff. Ah, here we have another fuse puzzle. Some money at the end, not necessary, but um, uh, you now it is. If we can get that extra 800 balance and get that extra heart, totally worth it. This is a fuse puzzle, so I had it mess up on me. I don't know if I just overlooked something, but sometimes when I put an extra blue block underneath, the fuse goes down instead of up, leaving that top area still blocked off. Very annoying. Then again, as a kid, maybe I just did it wrong. The problem, of course, being is that that little lantern thing that was in the way is not pushable. Okay, back to the other side of the board. Yes, walkway regenerates. Still, you don't want to give it too much of a chance. And let's see, I think it should be at the end of this pathway. Just don't jump, and you will stop on a dime. And... Yeah, we still need more of a path there. 
Okay, it's gonna be another switch I missed. Uh, something over here. I should recall there's like a net over here or something. Something past that breakaway walkway. Let's see, over here maybe? Oh. Probably over here. Oh! No, the switch is the whole path I just missed. Uh, and you'll see they very annoyingly have placed the walls as railings to keep you from taking any shortcuts. There's not even anything here to avoid, it's just tedious. There's like a flame right here. You can jump over on the way there, but can't jump over on the way back. You have to run all the way back. No shortcuts. That would have been handy, an animal that just kind of teleports you to another spot in the map. Maybe we kind of put it down as a waypoint, but I guess it would make things too easy. But there's also this now. Which should get us right back to the bottom. Oh! Okay, I screwed that up. Over here. And now we should be ready for the next area. Let's see. Follow the path. Stop at the end, and oh, little, little too far, too far. Okay, uh, dang it, <laughs> to go back again. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, looks good. Maybe we can do a quick jump over here or something and get to it, or maybe not. Call that kind of puzzle. It's not really. I guess it is kind of platforming. Let's see. Come on, let's go. Get this area over with. Cover the part of the game. We're really catching up with the fortune teller. We're going to be able to talk to something. It's not an animal soon. Well, you know what I mean. That is a subtle clue that if you slash the grass around here, you'll find an arrow pointing up. Which is stupid, because where else are we going to go? However, so I guess it has some use, because if you walk right up to the edge, you'll find... Let me just finish... Yeah, also plenty of apples here, a good place to heal up. Don't get greedy because you might need some in a minute. But as you see, if you just go walk up, you run into something. Here. An invisible path. It looks like a giant D. It's interesting to note there's this, a, this puzzle is slightly different than the American version. And it basically has to do with the fact that most of the animals in the American version have names. Your dog, for instance, is named Mac. And the original puzzle what you're going to find, you would find here was the letters M-A-C, signaling that you're supposed to, uh, what's it called, have used the dog at the very end of the thing. You'll see when we get there. Uh, for some reason, these guys function like the bees, where they can just sort of knock you around. Very annoying. The trick is to jump and watch where your shadow appears. In any case, if you know what the answer is, or you just are in a hurry, you don't have to actually fill these out. I just completionist me. Okay. Here we go. Uh, stand in front with a beast that shows the path. And the way forward shall be clear. It says dog. I are seeing Mac in the American version, so you just need to equip your dog. I guess he had a use after all. Okay. Here we are in this interesting looking place. Floating Islands, let's get the dog back away because we need something. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mac. Okay. Trick here is you have to go to every corner and hit the switch, which basically does exactly what just happened there. Oh, yeah, you gotta be careful. These guys will knock you off really easily. They keep re reappearing too, unless you kill them. Yeah, and if you get too fast, it'll just fall off into nothing. Our goal is to get past that gate. 
two switches left. And last one. See, that confuses me, because it doesn't really come out to say, is the fortune teller the dragon? Or is the dragon the entity behind the door? The entity behind the door mentions that uh, it's the one that gave you the ability to speak to animals. So I think that would be the fortune teller. So I don't know who or follow or what he means by that. And then again, I guess they had to have some sort of weird explanation for where this dragon came out of nowhere. Okay, he can be a little bit difficult, but the trick to him is to basically get above him and hit him with the strongest ice magic, which finally gets some good use. The thing is, he's a little faster than you, so you'll need to use the hyena to get around him. Oddly enough, they made you destroy the walkways, which would give you an alternate path. Still, if you keep hitting him from enough, see, he'll block your sword swings from below. But even if he moves the sword there from above, when you're standing in front of him, it doesn't block it. Keep hitting it, and he falls to pieces. Okay, at this point, you basically head up to the door. Let's see if there's anything else. No, there's nothing else here. Head up to the door. Foolish humans! I give you a test to make you remember what is important. See, it's right there. He's... Whatever this is, apparently God or whatever. I tainted. I didn't taint anything. It's not my fault the dragon came here. Okay, he says he's going to get fired. Final judgments. Narration. I believe there is a line here in the American version that where he says, "The crusade of the Sinti has ended." I always wondered if that meant century. Anyway, here we are back at the Tower of Babel. Unfortunately, we are stuck behind this green wall thing. On the plus side, we can talk to humans again. This clever guy jumped off the tower to escape something. Anyway, on cue, here comes the butterfly. Yep, finally joins, and now he is useful. In fact, he's very useful. A butterfly will let you control where your sword goes, like so. Mind you, I don't know why I couldn't have just hopped over that, but oh well. Snowing an iris. Feels like the world's going in the wrong direction. I might have kicked off the apocalypse. Whoopsie. Oh well, we're going to grab some money and I think we'll call it it for this time. Thanks for watching. We will... Pick this up next time and see what's going on in Iris.